Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Obi Snods and I'm back from the summer and this summer I built a new forge and an anvil stand and a vice stand and I restored mechanically an old tractor and today I'll be shooting some videos to explain what I've been doing this summer and I haven't uploaded a lot of videos and I apologize to any of my few subscribers for that and uh, but I hope I can just expand my da database to some small mechanics and stuff I guess but so, today I'm showing you guys the forge, and I'll be right back. Thanks. Hey, I'm back. So before we did a video of the new forge, I figured we'd do a video of the old forge. So this forge I built out of an old horse manger is the hood, and then this right here is a tractor plow. In here I have the end of a muffler for the fire pot, and uh, it's only about four inches around the top. And so I couldn't do a lot of large projects, and it didn't have a lot of coal storage, and it's rather unstable. And so uh, I built a new one with a bigger table, bigger fire pot, more coal storage. Uh, just all around a lot better, and I'm a lot more happy with. But I'll just give you guys a quick shot of this forge. So in there... That's the fire pot right there. You can't really see it very well, but you get the idea. Then that horseshoe right there is right there is my rest. And then here's my air duct. So the air goes the air goes in right there, goes up into the fire pot, and then the ash falls down to my ash gate, which is just my ash gate just works by going like this. And it's kind of tight because of the rust, but it would just go up and down like that. And I tried to make an air gate like that, but it never really worked, so I didn't bother on my new forge. And then also I built a little clinker breaker, which also never worked, so I didn't bother on my new forge. But I don't know. That was just a project. I had no idea what I was doing. I saw like two or three videos and decided I'd try it, and it never never really did what I needed it to I guess but I'll be back in a bit with a shot in the new forge okay give me so here's the new forge and as you can tell it's a lot more professional I guess and this forge cost me the last forge cost me almost nothing actually it cost me about 20 bucks I used a hair dryer as a fan and this forge I decided to be more professional because I wanted this to be my lifetime forge kind of uh, so, right now, just ignore the top of the table. I'll show you all the details of the upper fire pot. But right now, I'll just show you the way this hole works. So, the same concept. Ash falls down, air goes in and up. And then, but this one, so the fan right here is like, I think this was a $120 fan. And I'd just rather buy a nice one than try to dink around with hair dryers again. That was frustrating. But, so, the way this works is you have your fire pot up here and your ash dump down here. And it's just on a much larger scale. And so, in metal, it probably cost me about 100 to 120. And originally, I was going to put cross braces across the bottom, too. But it's overbuilt as it is, so I just left it. And then I have two locking wheels, one on each corner. I have one on that corner over there and one here and then the other two are the same like radius and height and stuff but they aren't locking wheels and then so I just have pretty much a metal table and then I cut a 14 inch long hole by 8 inches wide in the middle of it put my my fire pot isn't welded in so it can lift in and out I'll give you an example of this working within this video I'm not sure when I'll shoot it though but uh this video will be up in the next day or two. But so there's that basic concept of the fan and stuff. And I'll show you that. And so that's just a nice even airflow and it works well. And I'll hurry and open up the fire pot and give you a shot of that. And then we'll move to the shot of the forge in action. Probably melting something or I'm not sure quite what I'll do. But just give me a minute. Okay, I'm back. So if you wanted to build this forge, it's the 36 by 36 inch table. It's 38 inches off the ground due to the 2 inch wheels, 36 inch legs. 
uh, 36 inch by 36 inch table, eighth inch plate on top with angle iron going around the edges, again 36 inches long. The fire pot right here is 14 inches long along the top right here. Then right in here, this is eight and a half inches. Then right here is three inches. And this here is eight inches. And that will all line up perfectly if you just do those certain measurements. And then just cut from three inches, or from eight and, eight and a half inches down here to 14 inches. And if you have this evenly in the middle, then you'll get a perfect angle for these two measurements lining up right here. And then right here, these are centimeter by centimeter holes. They're a little too big because this one was two centimeters long. So it was letting a lot of my coal through because where I live, I can get tons of coal and lots of small coal. This forge would also work with charcoal because I know a lot of people in the United States for some reason don't live by coal. But I live in the Rockies, so we have plenty of coal here. It's only about nine bucks for 100 pounds, 120 pounds. So it's pretty cheap over here. But we have... Uh, so I put two lumps of metal over that so that we just have centimeter by centimeter. You can probably see it over here better. And then over here I put like little nails or whatever to just give it some extra vision. And because there's so much air coming up against these, they don't get hot and melt, these little tiny wires. Uh, so that's that. And then here's what clinker breakers look like if you really knew at this, but everyone knows what they look like pretty much. But so 40 inches or and it will hold about 40 to 60 pounds of coal depending on how much you can manage to shove on the table but comfortably I'd say 40 to 50 pounds I think at first I had 70 pounds of coal and it was just heaped up and it was really hard to work with because it would always fall in the fire pot and that was a little overdoing it but since then I burned some off and now I'm down to a good amount and so this forge cost about in metal it cost 120 the fan was one, 105 I think and then the cords and stuff and the conduit that I put on the fan and the switch it probably added up to this forge costing me about 240 bucks which is a lot better than buying one of this size and like uh, quality I could buy this for oh let's see It'd probably cost around 600 to 800 bucks depending upon how the fire pot worked because some of them have like fancy air gates and fancy ash dumps. But the ash dump I have just works through gravity. I'll give you another shot of that, but first let's look at the fan in action. So there's going to be a lot of coal dust, and if any gets on the lens, sorry. But so you just have the air, and it blows up through there pretty good. But I'm going to put a little air controller on the uh, fan. That way I can control how much air it can intake and outtake. Because when I bought the fan, I asked them if I could use a speed control switch on it. And they said that wasn't a good idea. Because on these types of motors and fans, don't do that, guys, because it will burn out your motor. Just a warning. So what you're going to want to do instead is... Here, I'll give you a clip of that. But what you're going to want to do... Here, one sec. Okay, I'm back. Sorry of doing another shot of the bottom. I just wanted to show you guys everything, I guess. But, uh... So before I didn't dump it because I didn't have a bucket underneath and I didn't want it all over the driveway. But there's your ash gate. So I just put a long quarter inch rod on it. Probably That's probably about 16 inches long. But I just made it so that it wouldn't poke out past this point. Because I wanted it to be all confined so that nothing was poking out too much. That way I could fit it in a three, five, three foot space for storage or whatnot. And so right here on the fan, what I want to do is I want to put a rubber cover that I can like slide back and forth to control how much air the fan can actually suck in. And they said that was a safe way to do it, or put an air gate in, but they're expensive. And to build one's complicated, because I tried on my last forge, it didn't work very well. But it, uh, I don't know. This system works well. All I need is a speed control or like some way to control the air a little more. But other than that, everything about this forge I absolutely love. I highly advise building one at least within these specs and if you can go bigger on the table because that extra space will come in a lot handy later just having that extra storage space for coal because my last forge was just a pain and to get an idea on how much this burns this probably burns about two to three pounds of coal per hour but I'm running the fan full power all the time 
when I'm running it. And once I have that speed control where I can control how much heat I need when I need it, it'll be a lot less coal and it'll be a lot more efficient. But right now as it is, it probably burns about three pounds an hour. I'm not sure if that would be the same with charcoal or not. But I'll give you an underview of the fire. So if you look right here, this is the underside of the fire pot. Now when I built the fire pot, it comes to an abrupt stop right here where this is eight inches, eight and a half inches long and three inches across right here. And I needed some way to convert that to a two inch air pipe. So what I ended up doing, and I didn't bother painting all this because it gets so hot the paint would burn off anyways. So I just left it as it is. But uh, So right here, this is a three inch wide pipe and I actually cut angles on either end. I cut off the top. And then what I did is I bent it open. That way it could fit over that four inch. Oh, this is four inches across, guys. Sorry, sorry. Four inches across. When you build this fire pot, if you do, it's four inches, not three. I'm terribly sorry about that earlier in the video. Uh, so what happened is I built this funnel, and it comes down to here. I'll show you a side view in just a second. And that way my air is evenly distributed up and out. That way it's not all coming up right up into the bottom right here. It makes it so I can spread my air holes out over the total eight and a half inches that the bottom of the fire pot is. I didn't plan for it to be eight and a half inches. It just kind of turned out that way after I dinkered around with it because no one else on the internet I could find had the exact measurements of a fire pot I could exactly duplicate. So now I'm giving you guys that measurements. Again, it's four across here, eight across the top, uh, 14 across the top lengthwise, eight and a half across here, and if you center everything up and cut it at that angle, then you'll get it perfectly. And I'll show you a side view of that vent so you can kind of see what I'm saying a little more. This is a side view of the vent. So you can see this is the bottom of the fire pot right here, right where this weld is. And then this is that funnel I'm talking about. This is where any heat is. All the heat's still up here. This is more of just a funnel to catch the ashes, bring them down, and make the air evenly distribute up. But that's an important part. Otherwise, you'll have a headache trying to figure out how to do that. But that's how I did it, and it works well, and the air is evenly distributed. As long as you make those hole sizes the same as I did. But I'm not saying you have to exactly copy it. Like, go ahead and dink around with it. I just don't want, like, for me, it was the total headache. I had to design this whole thing on my own. I had some help off the internet, but it wasn't terribly hard. But I thought it'd be nice if I gave you guys, like, measurements where you could just go ahead and build it, and you know it'd work. So... That's it, and that's this forge, and I will show you it in action. I'll be right back. Thanks. Hey, I'm back. This is only like an hour later. But here you can see that I got a big aluminum crucible up there. Well, it's an iron pot that I made. And I'm melting down aluminum today. I'll make a video on that, too. I've already made one, but it's kind of a crappy quality with my old forge and a tiny crucible. Down here you can see that I've made my, I made a speed control flap. Actually, you can't really see it right there. Um, I'm going to adjust the lighting so you guys can see that better. I'll be right back. Hey, I'm back. So right now you can hear that fan. It's pretty quiet. But So here's how the flap works. You see if I lift up on the flap, and it sucks a lot more air and the fire gets a lot bigger. Actually, I like it at that minimal. Just a tiny bit of air getting sucked in. I like it right there. It seems to work well. I'll get the camera out of that shot angle. Sorry for the camera wobble. I just don't want to get the wind's blowing over there and I don't want sparkles on my lens. But see the and when you use the ash dump you gotta turn off the fan. Remember that guys. Or else it will blow everywhere. I just did that anyways, even though I turned off the fan because it was still going with momentum. But so there's my aluminum pot. I'm gonna make some videos on the tractor I restored today and some other stuff, but one sec, I'll change this camera view so you aren't staring at a tool bucket or ash dump while I'm doing the end of the So you guys can see that over this last year and a half, I've learned quite a bit about this stuff. I'm still no professional, but I'm a pretty good hobbyist, I'd say. But uh, So I've just been working up my knowledge. If you guys have any knowledge you'd like to share in the comments, go ahead. Please keep criticism down. I know I probably made some mistake that you guys are all going to nag about, but I'm open to suggestive comments. Just please keep the negativity out of it. But <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's kind of random. Most of you guys are fine. But 
Uh, so, uh, yeah, that uh, gate I put on there, all I did is I used a, I took a screw out, I made a rubber seal, and I screw, put the, drilled the hole in it and put the screw back in so that I can move it back and forth and control the airflow over that hole on the side of the fan that intakes the air. But please comment, subscribe, like the video, watch my other videos if you want to. I'm not saying you have to, but if you'd like to, this is the kind of stuff I do. And I'll have more videos updating on this forge. I've had it operational for about a month now, and it's worked with no complaints. It melts aluminum. That whole pot of aluminum probably, I can fill that whole pot up in about half an hour of melting down cans. But I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Remember to comment or subscribe or thumbs up or something, please. <laughs>